Alrighty guys, so this is a Quincy, ah shit, turn that off or else the copyright Nazis will be after me faster than flies on a turd. So, this is a Quincy QT 7.5 air compressor pump. You know, you can see it's uh, definitely seen better days. I'm going to be doing a complete restoration on this thing, simply because that it, it turns partially like it turns a little bit and then it stops and see and it sees up so that's that's why that the uh, previous owner was throwing this out so I think I got a pretty lucky deal because I got this thing for free so it'll be quite interesting to see how this thing was assembled inside seeing how everything works inside you know it's just a basic reciprocating compressor now this thing now these things, well this model is rated for 22.5 CFM at 175 PSI. So this thing's a uh, pretty nice pump. Let's see if we can look at the serial number. Oh, you can kind of see it there. Oh, yeah, Quincy 7.5. It was made 1982, which makes about 36 years old. So, step one. If I want to do a complete restoration, I got to do step one. That is to get a bin. Uh, step one: get a bin that's empty like this. I can put all the parts, parts and everything in here, because I don't want to lose it. Because this will take me quite some time to actually get this thing cleaned up, see what's wrong with it, fix it, get the correct part if there's actually anything wrong with it, put it back together. So it. So it'll be dismantled for quite some time. So I want to get a bin. If I have to, I got a separate bin right there. So, so by looking at this, my first step on dismantling this is to take off the inner cooler that connects the first stage to the second stage. You see that right there? I took took this off in the filter. It looks very good. So I'm just going to leave the filter in there. I'm going to take that off right there. I'll take this off. Take the inner cooler off. But they have it going down underneath and around and up here. This is where the output is. There's a three quarter inch pipe thread on there. So, step one, take this off. Oh, well, that was pretty easy. Okay, that's free. I gotta turn the camera. Get a better angle. Okay, there we go. Now I got got the the intercooler tube disconnected. There's just a bracket right down there. You can't see it though, but there's a bracket. Let's see, can you see it? Right there. You can just barely see the end of the brackets. Right there. That's the bracket right there that holds it on. Once I once I uh, take that bracket off, I should just be able to lift this up, and the inner cooler will just come right off. So let me loosen that up. Okay, so okay, so I can technically get that that bracket off that holds the inner cooler on, but I'm gonna try and get this flywheel off first. And if I can't get that, then I guess I'll just have to uh, put some put some coil on here and just hope. And just hope that the uh, that this thing's not seized shut. So let me just grab my uh, fap off. And here we go. Ah, well, there it goes. Okay, so I put these in the bin. Let's see if I can get this off. I may have to use a puller for that. Okay, got a puller on it, so let's so let's see what happens when we plus where we uh, try and take it off. Oh, oh she's free. Oh, tell that you can tell that guy was on tight. Well, that's why. It's got a taper. So the moment it broke free, it just popped right off. 
Okay, so now I got the flywheel off. Apparently that's a taper, so... So it's uh, smooth all the way around. So now it's time to take off the last piece that holds the inner cooler on. Gotta love metric. It's dusty, that's for sure. Put that bolt in the bin. Okay, so now it's that bracket removed. Now, now I just gotta lift it up a little bit so I can get these uh, intercooler flanges off. And it should just come right off. Just like that. So here's our intercooler. See, it's very dusty, so I'm gonna clean that out whenever I have a second. Oh yeah, intercooler removed. Put that in the bucket. Okay, so after I got the so I got everything off. Now, my next step is to take off these bolts. Now these are torqued to, let's see what the manual says. You know, we see it right about here. Look, see, these bolts right here are torqued to 55 foot-pounds. So, so this is going to be quite interesting taking these off. Let's see how we do. Okay, so I I was after about 20 minutes of struggling, I was finally able to break all of these off. So I only have two bolts left still in here, just so I can get this off. Nope. Apparently that was easy to come off. I didn't even try and break the seal on that yet. Okay. Okay, there we go. And I'll show you what the filter looks like. It's a pretty big, it's a pretty beefy filter. So I put that right there. It's a decent sized filter. So, and it looks pretty clean. It's got this, it's got this mesh on here. But if I peel it the back, see that the filter is in. It's in okay shape. But for my, but for what I'm going to use it for, it's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to put this back together so I try to keep everything compact. And I'll put this in the bin. And I'm going to take these off and the head's already loose. I guess when I try breaking that off, breaking the uh, filter out, I, I was able to break the seal. I didn't even try doing that off camera. I just had to move it. So, there we go. Last two bolts out. And lift up. There we go. That's what the inside looks like. You can see that the first stage is pre is pretty is a decent size larger than the second stage. So, let's see if I can take this off. Just gotta put this in the bin. Okay. All right, now let's see what we're looking at here. Can I break this up? Hmm. Yes, I can. Okay, and here we go. See that the second stage is a lot smaller. Got this membrane on here. See if they, I'll see if I can get a new gasket for this. That's if I can reuse this. I don't think I'll be able to reuse this, but I'll probably just get a new gasket anyway. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So I am a. Uh... All right, so you got the. First stage right here, you can see that is pretty filthy. And you have the second stage. Let's see if I can be able to turn the shaft and see what's happening. Okay, so I got I was able to get the, the valves off, and here's what they look like. There we go. And you can see it's uh definitely seen better days. That's that's a little bit of oil, but 
once I figure out what's wrong with this thing, I'm gonna try and clean this up, probably sand that off and see how it looks on the underside, because I believe this, from what it looks like, this may be the discharge of the pump. That is the suction. And same thing with same thing with that one. That one I believe is the discharge and the suction. Actually, after looking at it, it sits on like that. So you got your intake coming in, goes in. Then when the cylinder comes up, there's a, there's that little valve right in between there that pushes up, lets the air go through. Then the cooler comes in. It'll go through the cooler, come back in from this side. Then the piston goes down, sucks it up. Then when it starts coming up, that valve will close and that one will start to open. Pushes the air up and brings it into the outlet, into your air tank or whatever you have it being driven by. But looking at the piston part, you can see this one's pretty oily, which is no surprise. But this is, my, but this is where I think could be part of the problem. Looks very pretty in there, doesn't it? Got a nice score line right there. That doesn't look very good. And the inside, the piston does not look good at all. But here's the re here's the reason why that it that was thrown out. I can move it, but once I start getting here, it just seizes up. I can't move it. And when I try and turn it back, it seized up right there. So I can only move it a little bit like this. I don't want to do this too much because at this point there is no oil around here. So so here's what's happening. Get stuck right there. So now my next step is I'm gonna take the cylinders off and I'm gonna see what's the see what is holding me back. Maybe a little bit of a difficult because once I take these six bolts off, once I lift it up, the the, the pistons are just going to fall right down. And I have to see if I can rent a tool to once I do find a repair or once I do get it, do the repair, and then I have to get the uh, the ring ring squeezers. Or I can't think of the tool at the moment, but it will squeeze the piston rings so I'll be able to push the cylinder push the piston back into the cylinder so so that's my next step take this off we'll see how we do Okay. Oh, let me turn that off. Copyright Nazis. Okay. So here's here's what a here's what it looks like. <sighs> Piston rings. They look. They look to be in good shape. Now the uh, the one the troubled one. Doesn't look it doesn't look very good right there. So I may have to uh oops sorry. Doesn't look too good right here. Come on, focus. Thank you. Come on, there we go. Doesn't look very good right there, doesn't it? So I'll see if I can order a couple set of uh, piston rings right there. And while I'm at it, might as well get a whole new set right here. And on this one, this one looks in okay shape. There's a little more free to move. Yeah, yeah, so I'll so probably just order a set of them. However, the uh, connecting rod looks in pretty good shape. Now let's see. Now let's see if I can turn it. Let's see. 
wipe my hand off first. Okay. Now let's see if I can turn it. Okay, so what I think the problem is the second stage piston rings are bad because I can only move one, one of the rings. However, on this one, I can move all three. So I think that is the problem right there. But uh, while I have everything apart, I'm going to order a new set of piston rings. And I'm thinking oh, I could probably order a new set of the first stage as well. But while I have it all dismantled, I could take take the connecting rods off and inspect the bushings and I'll see if I have to order them but they should be okay though so my next step I'm gonna take off the connecting rods here we go Okay, well, after taking a look at this, you can tell, definitely tell that this thing was very hot at one point. Maybe that's why it failed. But I can I notice that there's a decent amount of scoring on here. So I'll see if that if there's a bushing in here. If not, I'll see how much it is for a new connecting rod. But I don't think that this is really the problem because it still moves freely on the sh on the crankshaft. But you can definitely see that there's some scoring on there, but I think it's, I, th I still think it's okay. But I definitely want to clean these up before I put, before I assemble this. I don't think I, I don't think I'll need, I don't think I'll need to take that off. Because this is, because this thing moves just fine. So, I don't, th I don't think... The first stage is an issue. I think it was the second stage. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Take the take the uh, the the black oil out or the the used oil. You know, I'll probably coat everything in a light in a thin coat of oil so it doesn't rust or anything like that as it sits waiting on parts. So so that's where I'm at with this with this new uh, with this uh, new toy. So hope you're. Uh, Hope you learned something just like I did. And uh yeah, next video about this thing will be either either actually replacing the rings on here or clean or just cleaning it up. It depends on what comes first. So thanks for watching and uh we'll see you next time, alright?